Welcome to today's tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at making a cubist style image which has been inspired by the artist David Hockney. So here we have a picture of his mother and he did this by taking lots of photos and pulling them together and he called this photo joiners. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing this in Photoshop. So the first thing I'd like you to do is download this image from the description box and bring it into Photoshop. It's a little bit small on my screen, so I'm going to zoom in by holding Command and Plus to zoom in and again to zoom in a little bit more. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my background layer and I'm going to go Command and J to duplicate that background layer. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Command and T and I'm going to make the man's face in the image way, 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 way bigger. At the moment it's way too small, so I'm going to make it much bigger and I'm going to move it over to the side of the image over here. Around right about there will be fine. I'm happy with that transformation, so I'm going to tick it to apply it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a chessboard bunch of squares. So what I'm going to do in order to do that is I'm just going to create a new layer by hitting plus down here and I'm going to call this white square. Now in order to do this very well I'm going to hide my two background images and I'm going to have uh, nothing visible apart from this white layer. Then I'm going to come up here but before I start I'm going to click on my move tool and then up here on my move tool I'm going to right click and I'm going to reset all tools and I'm going to hit OK and this way your tools will be the exact same uh, as my tools. I'm going to get my marquee tool up here and under my marquee tool under style I'm going to change it from normal to fixed size and I'm going to change this to 500 pixels wide by 500 pixels high. Then I'm going to go ahead and click uh, a box anywhere in the square and then I'm going to hit G for paint bucket tool. I'm going to ensure that my foreground color here is white and I'm going to click in there and I have a white square. Loving that. Excellent. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to my white square. I'm going to click to make it active. I'm going to go Command and J. I've now duplicated that layer. I'm going to hit V for move and I'm going to move my white square. It should snap exactly into the corner like that. So I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. I'm going to double click. I'm going to call it black. And then on my black layer, I'm going to get my marquee tool. And again, make a selection in here. G for paint bucket. I'm going to choose these little arrows down here to switch my foreground color to black. And I'm going to click in there. And now my uh, background color is there, there is black. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to press Command and J to duplicate it to move and now I'm going to move my black square and I'm just going to make sure it exactly snaps in place. Now I'm going to command and plus to zoom in on this to make sure it's exactly right. Now this black square isn't quite right so I'm going to move it up a bit and now that's looking fantastic. Now what we're going to do is we are going to just get all our square layers. I'm going to click my top layer. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to click my bottom layer and I've got all my square layers there. Then I'm going to command an E and that merges my layers together. Now I'm going to command an minus to zoom out so I can see my whole picture. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a process of duplicating these layers and move them around so we make a whole big uh, a square of patches. So in order to do that on my layer here I'm going to go command and J to make it a layer. Command and J to duplicate again. And command and J to duplicate a fourth time. Then I'm going to hit V for move and I'm going to move this layer out until it snaps into position. Make sure it does snap exactly into position. And same with this and same with this one here. So do take the time to make sure it's snapped exactly into place. Then go ahead, go ahead, click your top layer, hold down shift, click your bottom layer, command and E to merge together. Now I'm just going to repeat this a few times until the whole page is covered, taking my time to do it and I'm just going to speed you up so you don't have to watch me exactly.
Okay, so at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my base layer here. And then on my top layer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the opacity so I can see through the top layer. And what I'm trying to do is I'm going to change my checkered board uh, layer until I've got the uh, black areas covering the key points of the face, for example, the eyes, the nose, and the lips. Now, I don't like it in the chess orientation so much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my uh, checkered board round. So in order to do that, it's Command and T. And you'll notice when, when, when I move my mouse outside, we get the curved arrows like that. I'm going to hold down the Shift, and this allows it to snap exactly to 45 degrees. I'm kind of liking that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move it around. I'm going to make sure it covers the whole image. I don't want part of the image. I want it to cover the whole image. I'm going to move it around, and I'm going to make sure that, in this instance, I'm going to go for the white squares covering the eyes, the, the, uh, the lips and the nose here. I'm kind of happy with that. I think that's looking kind of cool. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that transform by clicking that there. Now what I want to do is I want to select these white squares. So I'm going to hide the layer below. And then here I'm going to, on this layer up here, I'm going to go select and I'm going to go for color range. In this instance, I'm going to make sure I'm not in shadows, but I'm in the highlights and it's going to select the highlight areas. I don't need that layer anymore. I'm going to come down to my second layer. I'm going to make sure it's active. And then on this layer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to initiate a layer mask. So now we can see these key points of the face. Now I'm going to bring in my base layer again. So it doesn't look like we've made any changes, some slight changes. And on this layer here, if I hit V to move, we can move this layer around a bit. But what I want to do is I want to make it so that um, I have two of these uh, layers here. So I'm going to click in here and Command and J. So I now have two of the larger faces which have been got the checkerboard effect. I don't need my base layer anymore, so I'm going to get rid of that. So on one of these layers, I'm going to go for the top layer. I'm going to flip it over. So in order to do that, I'm going to go Image. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Edit. I'm going to go Transform, and I'm going to flip horizontally and now it's going to be pointing the other way and I just move it over here and now you can see if I line it up exactly we've got the two faces which looks very cool indeed. Now at the moment what I'm not liking is we can see through into these squares where there are no, no pixels so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to my base layer here I'm going to create a new layer I'm going to name it black and then on this layer, I'm going to click in there. I'm going to get my paint bucket tool. I'm going to make sure my color is black. And I'm just going to click in there and it will make my color perfectly black. Now what I can do is just get my top layer here and just move it around. Sorry. Get my move tool and move it around until I'm happy that it is creating the distortion effect that I want to achieve. So I'm going to keep mine there. I think that's very cool indeed. Now, um, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put an overlay over the top. So I'm going to get my uh, adjustment here, adjustment layers. I'm going to go for a gradient tool and I'm going to choose a gradient. I don't want reds. I'm thinking uh, grays could be quite interesting. This uh, light to dark gray could be quite interesting. I'm going to hit OK there. And then I'm going to blend through to see if I can find something which is of interest to me. And I think the best one of this occasion is this screen one here. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is uh, I want this to be bigger in the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click my first layer with the face on it. And I'm going to hold on Shift and click my next layer with a face in it. Then I'm going to go Command and T. And this is now transforming and increasing the size of both of these images together. Uh, and putting them more central on the page like this. And then to apply it, I'm going to click this here. Now here we have a cubist image. It's showing lots of angles. It's showing lots of perspectives. It looks very interesting. Now what I would encourage you to do is if I just hide those layers and come back to our base layer here, our checkered board layer, 
You can, of course, change this however much you like. I've got it on angles like this, but you can have it straight, you can have it square, you can press Command and T and really zoom in so that the uh, squares become very much bigger. That's an option to you as well. Go ahead, experiment with this and try and make some variations of this particular image. Here ends today's video tutorial.